Let's talk about adding container classes. So consider, for example, that we have an actor class. When this is implemented, we will have an actor object for each different actor, right? And they'll all be based on this class definition. But in our system, we will need something that contains all the actors. So if we want to add an actor, we can. If we want to see a list of the actors, we can. We need something to contain all these different actors. And so we'll create a container class. And I'm going to simply call it actors. And notice how that's just the same except with the S. But th this is my actors class. And it's going to contain all the actors. So every time I create a new actor object, I'm going to add it to this container and keep track of it here in this actors class. Now notice this is a container attribute and that has that square bracket s to indicate that there's many of them or at least more than one actor. And now the operations that I can do in this container class is that I can add a new actor. So add an actor. If, it, if I have one that doesn't exist yet, I can add one. I can, uh, what, else, what else do I want to do here? I can add an actor. I can remove an actor if for some reason we put one in on accident and we don't want it there anymore. I can remove an actor. So what about editing an actor? Now, if I could edit an actor and I could go in this actors class, find that actor and edit it. But notice that one of the things we want to do is keep the functionality as close as we can. So editing an actor would be in this class because it's more associated with that one specific actor. When I'm going to edit an actor, it's related to a single object of actor, not with the group container of actors. So editing would go in this class. So edit an actor would go there. So putting it there, even though I could get to the, an individual actor through this actors class, it's more closely associated to go here. Okay, so that's a container class for that. Now look at another way, place where things are contained, where an object is contained. So here's movie items. So every single DVD or movie file is a movie item. So I'm gonna have lots and lots of movie items objects, right? Oops, that doesn't need to be an S. That's just movie item object. So I'm going to have plenty of movie item objects. And, but where am I going to contain all these different movie item objects? Well, it turns out that an inventory record contains movie items. So I'm going to have lots of inventory records, uh, but I'm going to have one inventory record for the Bambi movie, and it's going to contain lots of movie items. It's going to contain one movie item for each DVD that's a Bambi movie and each movie file that's a Bambi movie. And then for my Air Force One movie items, there's going to be an inventory record for Air Force One. So I don't need a separate class to contain the movie items because they're being contained in inventory record. How about inventory record? There's going to be many of those, right? There's going to be one for Bambi, one for Air Force One, one for Shrek, whatever the movie is, there's going to be an individual inventory record for every different movie that we have in inventory. And notice that there's a container for inventory records in inventory. So when you're talking about a container class, you need to think that with each class you're going to have multiple objects and you need to be able to identify where those objects belong. So here we have one that's a movie info, and I'm going to have one movie info for Bambi that tells me all the information I need for the Bambi movie. I'm going to have another one for the Shrek movie, another one. So I'm going to have one movie info object for each inventory record. So I can add that here. So now I'm going to have a movie info. This is... I follow the pattern that when I talk about a property, I don't, I start with a lower case, and when I start with a class, I do an uppercase, so I see I didn't follow that pattern there. But I'm going to have a movie 
info object and notice I'm only going to have one for the Bambi movie. And so for that inventory record, I'm only going to have one. Although I'll have several DVDs of Bambi, I'll only have one movie info object. So it's not a container class. I mean, it's not a container attribute, but it does contain the movie info. So all the different movie info objects have a place to be stored. So when you're thinking about creating containers for the different objects that you are that are created, they can come in a variety of forms. There can be a container that is an individual container class that that's its job is to contain the actor. You can also have a container attribute whose job it is to contain many of those objects. You can also have a container an attribute whose job it is to contain a single object of that type. No matter which version of a container class for each of the many objects that you're going to create, be sure and think about where do, where do objects of this type belong and how do they get stored and connected.